Tonight, to really understand this, we want to talk with a teacher whose district is open and is supposed to be staying open. What is the impact on her and her students? How about in other districts? Julie Holdenbaum is a high school English teacher in Minerva, Ohio. Ms. Holdenbaum, when is a reasonable deadline, do you think, to get back in a classroom after winter break in some of these areas that are not doing it, knowing that the risk is never going to be zero? <laughs> That's for sure. Um, I don't know. I think it is so dependent upon the area of what the spread is like in the area. Um, it's pretty high where I live in northeastern Ohio. There are, there are some districts in our state I know that have opted to delay their opening for a few days or even a week or so. Um, my school district started back to class today in person and so far it went okay. I anticipate there will be some absences because of COVID spread over the holiday coming up here in the next week or so. In your area, like I'm in Washington, D.C., I think every single child had to submit uh, a negative test before they could re-enter. Is it like that in your area? Did you feel safe? Um, no, we, that surprises me. We have not had to submit negative tests um, at any point during the pandemic. Um, as far as like everybody, I think you might have to have a negative test to come back to school or maybe in the past you did. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, everybody just comes and our policy on quarantining is dependent upon the Ohio Department of Health. So whatever their policy is, that's what we follow. Okay. There's this side by side that a lot of people are talking about right now. And that's because if adults contract COVID, but they're asymptomatic, they can go back to work in five days. They got to wear a mask for the next five days after that. But for schools, kids are in quarantine for something like 10 days right now. The kids are lower risk typically. The transmission usually is a small window, two days before, two days after you, you contract it or show symptoms. Does that make sense that kids have to be double in quarantine? Well, I think schools are kind of a unique environment in that there aren't a lot of jobs where you can't kind of separate yourself out from other people. I mean, even the jobs that are back in person and not working from home, there aren't too many other situations where you've got 25 or in some cases 30 or so people in a really small space. So it does make sense to me to be more cautious with, um, with students, with kids. Like I said, I'm in Ohio and we no longer quarantine students if they've been in contact. Um, they just have to wear masks for 10 days. Most parents do not want to go back to virtual school. Of course, they want their kids to be healthy, but they do not want to go back to e-school. And experts have shown, you know, it's hurting learning to be at home. Students with disabilities in particular, low income, rural students, you're in a, a smaller area, minority students. And I know that teachers are maxed out and, and America loves its teachers. And even if they probably don't always feel that way at the same time, I'm wondering if the unions, you're part of uh, a teacher's union, do they understand that millions of parents are saying, listen, I pay my taxes so I can send my kids to school. I need to work. I'm fed up. Do they get that? Oh, yes, <laughs> we get that. We absolutely get that. And we feel the same way, honestly. I mean, we would do just about anything to be able to be in school. Um, we went remote in March 2020 when Governor DeWine shut down our whole state. Um, and then last year, my district was back in person for the whole year and as i have i think i said this year we've been in person all year too so we want to be in in school and we know that's what's best for the kids um the unions always want what's best for the kids part of that though is what's best for the teachers and in this case it's what's best for both because it's a health issue it's a safety issue so it is a tricky balancing line we want to advocate for safety for our kids and in some cases that might be staying remote for a short period of time. In my case, we haven't done that yet. Um, of course, you never know what's coming, but I don't think we have any plans in my district to go remote. You never know with this pandemic though, what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Looking to the future, we have this one more semester left. And I know, like you said, so many unpredictable things have happened, but you have the job that I think a lot of us grew up dreaming about being a high school English teacher. I love that you're doing that job. Do you feel based on, you know, the general trends, um, also school leadership and your students that we're gonna be able to finish this school year strong? I think we will finish it as strong as we possibly can. I know that um, you said that teachers are, you know, I, I can't remember the wording you used, but we're we're exhausted. Um, yes. Oh, um, maxed out. Maxed, maxed out. out. The kids are exhausted. Um, it weighs on the kids, I think, you know, just the 
the, there's still some fear and they know that I, I have high school kids so they know the world is not the way it was they remember before covid um it weighs on them i think it's weighing on all of us but yes i think we can finish strong we have every every goal in place to do that we want our students to learn um, I still have a lot of great curriculum coming up the second half of the year. That's when I get to teach the great Gatsby. That's my favorite. So I think we're all excited to be back from Christmas and looking forward to um, getting over this. Hopefully Omicron here will kind of peak and we can get back to more steady, stable in school learning. Mm -hmm. I love that you're still focused on inspiring the kids, getting them some some good books that we all well. We should probably take the lesson again, but um, you're there to teach that. Julie Holderbaum, thank you so much for the hard work you and your colleagues do every single day. We want you to be safe. And again, hopefully we can finish this school year very strong and healthy. Thank you. Thank you.